Y'all, I appreciate you waiting. This, this is an important day. We are going to announce in a few minutes a statewide campaign to educate and inform the public and provide access to the information we need in this to combat this opioid crisis. And it really is a crisis. I've called it a, a silent hurricane because you don't hear it, but the, the destruction that it causes is, is equal to a hurricane, particularly in terms of lives. Uh, and more than that, we know that in just, uh, I think it was last year, we had 616 people killed by opioid abuse, op opioid overdose, opioid use, compared to 366 murders. That's again, 660 people died from opioids, compared to 366 actual murders. And I think the number of uh, uh, DUI dr uh, deaths or caused by DUIs was around 300. So I, I believe the figures demonstrate the tragedy that is encompassing us. And one thing that we've learned is we've studied and gotten deeper and deeper over, over, the, over the years, in the last few months especially, is that nationwide 54% of these opioid pills come from somebody's medicine cabinet. That is, they're, act, they're extra pills that are just left in the medicine cabinet and somehow they find their way out, whether by children who take them or dispose of them in some way, or they end up on the, the black market, the criminal market out there. And it really is a crisis. But since it's not in front of us, we don't see it. Most of us don't see it very, very often. It's something that is uh, very deceptive and very dangerous. So we are, th those of us here and, and many others have determined that it is time to do something about it that we have not done before. So that's what we're doing. And you will recall on December the 18th, that I issued an executive order declaring a statewide public health emergency for this entire state of South Carolina. That designation allows me as governor to bring the full power of the state's emergency management infrastructure, health care apparatus, and law enforcement resources to bear in responding to this growing, dangerous, highly dangerous epidemic and uh, addiction and abuse. I directed the Adjutant General, Bob Livingston, to utilize the emergency management infrastructure of the state to have all hands combat this crisis. To facilitate this coordination of federal, state, and local resources, I established the Opioid Emergency Response Team. You remember that was on December the 18th out at the Emergency Management Division. All hands were on deck, including people from the, the private sector, doctors, principals of, of high schools, as well as the entire law enforcement and emergency management team. And that organization is under the leadership of Sarah Goldsby of Deotis and Mark Keel of SLED. This team is making progress. We are having meetings, we're having discussions, and also we have taken action by having, I have required directed Department of, Health and Ho <clears throat> Department of Health and Human Services and the, and the State uh, Public Employment Benefit Authority has agreed voluntarily. I directed DHHS to limit the initial prescriptions for opioids for acute and post-operative pain to a maximum of five days under the Medicaid. So we're trying to get a handle on it. Of course, after the first five days, the, the patient will be able to go and get more from the doctor if they need to. But what we've discovered in our, in our over, over the years and over the last few months uh, specifically is, is that after five days, if you've taken five days or whatever amount of pain you're supposed to take a day of those, those pills, that your likelihood of becoming addicted just skyrockets. So five days is the, is the cutoff. That is, that is the dangerous line. That's the red line. Once you cross that, you run into problems of being in trouble. So what we are doing is we're limiting it to the first five days, and then you have to, have to go back. In addition to that, my budget, which I unveiled just recently, the executive budget, is adding some serious funds to this battle. We called for $4,350,000 in new dollars to Department of Health and human services for opioid treatment clinics throughout the state. I've called for $1,250,000 to the Department of Alcohol and Other Drugs and Abuse Services, DEOTIS, for enhanced response to opioid use disorder. 
I've directed $3 million for infrastructure improvements to the Day Otis 301 system and $448,416 for new narcotics agents at SLED. Now, whether the legislature will agree with what I've asked is another question, but we'll work hard to see that we do that. So now today we're here to announce a, an information and education campaign because we realize that the government and certainly cannot do it alone. There'll never be enough money. As I've said, uh, we are when we try to fund government services, we, we have a six foot bed, but a four foot blanket. There will never be enough money. And this is a way with an education campaign, which we're unveiling today, to let the citizens themselves, the mothers, the fathers, the children, the aunts, the uncles, the neighbors, the friends, anyone, to have access to all the information that they need, to have a place they can go to start to find where services, treatments, symptoms, the danger, and all of that. It's a one-stop shop for information to help inform the people of our state how to help take care of themselves as well as those they love, as well as total strangers that they may see as they move around during the day. So this is, a, this is an important step forward for South Carolina, and I'd like to call on Eric Bedingfield and also Sarah Goldsby to elaborate, if you please. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Governor, for giving us the opportunity to be here today. Um, this is actually a tremendous step forward in helping to remove the stigma and lack of education surrounding the opioid epidemic in South Carolina and in our nation. Um, one of our biggest uh, problems in South Carolina is just folks simply not understanding the dangers um, that exist and prevent families from existing and husbands and wives from raising children and, and us having a viable workforce in South Carolina. Um, so I'm I'm proud to be supportive of these effort, efforts. Um, I'm proud that our Opioid Prevention Abuse Study Committee and, and many of its members are here with me uh, today, with us today, um, to show our support for this effort in conjunction with the things that we have proposed in the report we issued yesterday. Um, we certainly support the governor's agenda monetarily uh, through the budget with his measures and we'll take those matters a step farther, I hope, in the General Assembly above and beyond agency request and the governor's request. I just stand here today as an example of a family who's been affected uh, negatively. Um, I lost my son a year and a half or so ago uh, to this issue. And those other 600 and some odd families can't be here today to do what I'm doing. Um, so don't look at me today as Eric Bedingfield, but an example of the families who have suffered uh, due to the loss of, of their loved ones, whether it be a child, a husband, a wife, a grandparent. This problem exists. It's, it's permeative. Um, I dare say that probably 75% of you folks standing here in front of me today have a family member that's suffering in one way, form, or another from an addiction issue. Um, our design today with this, with this money is to educate, inform, and make people understand uh, what's happening in our society related to this issue and things that we can do to prevent it. Um, the old saying is extremely true, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And today, we're gonna throw our ounce of prevention um, at everybody we can in South Carolina, and I'm, I'm glad to be here, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go. Thank you, Representative Bedingfield, for your heartfelt words, as always. And thank you, Governor, for your steadfast leadership on the opioid issue in our state. We know that so many prescriptions are dispensed in our state every year, more, in fact, than the citizens that we actually have in South Carolina. And these opioids or painkillers are extremely valuable and important as a, in one role in our medical field. But when they're misused, they can be incredibly dangerous. They can be harmful and addictive. And, you know, opioids can be just plain killers. They can kill relationships, they can kill futures, they can kill careers, and they can just plain kill. The Just Plain Killers is a public education campaign sponsored by DAOTAS, and it's really designed to give South, Carolina, South Carolinians a home for information about the safe storage, the safe disposal, and the safe use of prescription medications. And it's, it's really a hub, as, as the governor said, uh, to find information about where you can find help for yourself, 
uh, a neighbor, a coworker, uh, anyone suffering from opioid use disorder or any addiction. But this really isn't just a government issue as, as we're describing. State leaders can pass laws and we can uh, share resources, provide services, increase awareness, but we need the involvement of everyone in South Carolina to help combat this epidemic. So we need you to join the fight. And because, you know, it's, it's all of us who are affected, you know, neighbors, coworkers, classmates, employees. So this campaign, this website that we're, we're announcing today and, and showing you, JustPlainKillers.com, is going to contain the valuable information that citizens need and can use, printable resources, including brochures, fact sheets, uh, PowerPoint presentations. These can be used in your homes, in your classrooms, in places of worship and in businesses, uh, not just for the treatment professionals, but by employers and educators who really want to share more of this information with the people around them. And I'd like to take just a quick moment to show you one of the TV spots that we'll be using to raise awareness of the campaign and the website. Through this campaign and the work of the governor and the legislature, we're calling on all citizens to become involved, not to just sit on the sidelines, but with everyone's help, we can really make 2018 uh, a year of change. We can turn the tide on this. Uh, we ask business leaders, educators, residents, and members of the media to take a public pledge using one of the pledge cards found on the website and in the press kits that we'll be giving everyone here. Uh, we, we hope that you'll take a snap of a photo with these pledge cards and share them on social media channels. Share them on your Twitter, on your Facebook, on your Snapchat pages. Send the message that these, these medications can be dangerous, but you're taking a pledge to make a change on this in our state. Because really, together with all of us sending this message, we're, we're all working toward a healthier and happier new year and, and for all South Carolinians. So this concludes our press conference now. We can take some questions on, on the campaign at the podium and then Governor McMaster, Representative Bedingfield, and Vernon Kennedy of our Behavioral Health Services Association will be available for media representatives who would like to have individual comments. Uh, and, and one more time, we'll be sharing the press kits with everybody here so that you can see the actual materials. Liz Cordell with Chernoff Newman has those for you. Thank you. Let, let me uh, emphasize something that you heard Ms. Goldsby say, and that is that this is a different kind of a, of a crime, if you, if you call it that. And that is normally with law enforcement, uh, with your police, with citizens on the, on the lookout. Um, the, there's an event that happens that takes someone's property, uh, that hurts some, a violent attack on someone, or uh, there's uh, some event that happens that is reported immediately by someone. Well, this kind of a crisis is different. People are not reporting what happens. Usually what is happening, like the young man with the needle is in his arm or the woman going into a pocketbook, that's private, it's quiet, is silent and they're not going to tell anybody and there's nobody there. This is a different kind of threat. It's a silent, behind the scenes threat. It's things that are not reported. That's why it's up to every citizen to take a part. They used to say that uh, this is a uh, society is not a spectator sport. You, you got to get out of the stands and get down in the game. Well, you gotta, we got to help our neighbors. And this is a, this information educational campaign in which will be a sustained effort with the website is designed to provide each citizen with the tools and arms that they need to help fight this menace. But the first step is understanding that it's not the usual kind of a law enforcement question. It is something that law enforcement has difficulty responding to because you don't have victims up hollering, saying, bringing it to the attention that they have been hurt. It's different, so there must be a different uh, approach, and that approach is private citizens. 
Are there any questions? Let's go. The commercials will begin airing this month and will go on for several months. This is statewide. Everybody should realize that this will be this messaging and this media will be uh, equally shared across our entire state. Uh, the funds used for the campaign were with the 21st Century Cures Act funding, uh, our award from the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Agency uh, that was specific to respond to the opioid crisis in our state. People, I believe, understand that they are their neighbor's keeper. That you you have to be you have to be a good neighbor, and the incentive that you have is knowing that when you participate in making society a better place and helping your neighbors, watching out for the children, and all of these things, that you make South Carolina a better place. We have a great reputation, our state does, particularly for loving people and friendly people. What we, are, we want to do is emphasize today that this is a crisis which cannot be solved by the normal means that we expect to use to solve, to meet crises. And that is, this is going to take private initiative, private action, and we, the point is to alert the people of South Carolina that that is the kind of threat this is. And they must be involved if we are going going to solve I think we have the best law enforcement in the country. And there's, there's no, no doubt that our health is, establishment is, is terrific as well. But this is outside the scope of that. This is something that the, each citizen needs to take a part in. Well, that, that's easy. You just, you, you, how do you, you just do it. There's some things you must do, but also I'm, we're hoping that people will see these ads that are very good and that they will understand that this is a real crisis. A lot of times, once people understand that we're really in deep trouble, they'll, they will begin to react, and we're attempting to make that happen more so than it is already. Any more questions? Yes, sir. There are a number of ways that people can get help and treatment, and each individual has maybe one type of disease, but there are a number of ways that they can be helped because they're unique. And so a um, number of services, number of treatments can help people with this disease, particularly opioid use disorder. Um, and so we don't want to think of just one path to recovery, but all paths to recovery. And there are a number of places in our state, fantastic agencies, that can deliver multimodal uh, treatments for anyone with this disease. I understand that. I said if a client goes on to 28 days of treatment and he's released, is he, do we have an outlet for him to go to? Absolutely. We have 32 fantastic treatment agencies all over the state that receive our federal and state funds. Um, a large network of excellent providers for patients to really find a home for long term treatment and recovery with. Yes. And you'll be able to listen to those folks out Yes, you'll be able to access them on the website. More questions? Well then, thank you very much.